to start out? You want to start? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. Welcome back, everyone. We're glad you joined us. We were just talking to our viewers on Meerkat about how happy we were that they joined us. And we would like to see you guys on there also. You can chat with us live between the breaks. You can send us messages and try and make us laugh while we're trying to record. Um, I can't chat back because the app on Android has the back button right on top of the comment button. So mm -hmm. hopefully they get that worked out. Anyways, back to the technology. Since we love technology, technology is what allows us to put this show on. Otherwise, we have to be like in a TV studio or a radio we're tons studio. Of, we're, we're tons of makeup. A radio studio? I guess that's what they call it, right? But no, we can sit right here in the comfort of my home and record this podcast for you and blast it out to the internet for everyone to enjoy. And since we can do that, we love technology, so we want to talk about new technology. So there's this little website called TechCrunch, and they had this little event called Disrupt New York that was in the Manhattan Center that ended today. And they just had some startups there talking about their new things, and they had a little competition to see, like, you know, which one they thought was the best. Um, they got $50,000 to fund their idea better. So we just want to talk about them. First, the winner, of course, because we got to talk about the winner, because... It's probably the best one that yeah. was there. I didn't look at all the um, companies that participated in it. I just pulled out a couple. But the first one was called Li Liquidity Nanotech. Liquidity, uh, yeah, liquidity. And they are trying to make a water filter that uh, can filter out contaminants down to two, a 0.2 micro. So most water filters can filter about a one micron is typically what you'll get in like a water bottle style mm -hmm. filter, which um, actually even most water bottles can't filter that well, honestly. But one micron is pretty good, but it's not good enough if you want to really make your water clean. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, clean is relative because like your city water has like chlorine in it probably. So like that makes it taste bad. But technically, it's clean, yeah. right? Or like iodine, stuff like that, right? That's like yeah. not harmful, but tastes terrible. Um, I'm not into bad tasting water. I have a water. I have a Camelback water bottle that I take to work with me. Mm -hmm. That's what I have. That has the filter in it. Oh. I have the one with the filter in it because I don't like the way that the water tastes. Not because it's bad. I just I don't like the way it tastes with like the stuff they put in the yeah, water. Yeah, I don't like it either. So um, I'm I'm not picky. Like I'll drink tap water, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. If I drink tap water, it's gonna have to be cold, so I don't get that exactly. nasty taste. It has to be and cold. And so basically, their filter 0.2 microns is how big is the pores in the membrane, which um, get this, it's enough to get most of the contaminants in water. From E. coli to SARS to norovirus. Um, of course, there's a lot of water filters that can filter those things out. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like a, a hiking filter that you have to pump. Or like UV filters and stuff like that. Or you could boil it. Um, but all those either take a lot of time. Or they're extremely inconvenient. Or both. So, you know, on the effective side, you got things like, oh, iodine and chlorine. Like, we just talked about that it makes the water taste terrible, though. Yeah. Or you have a pump filter. You have to, like, pump it to force it through the filter because the membrane is so tightly together that uh, it's just kind of not easy to use. Yeah. Pretty effective still, but it's just not easy. Um, so basically their thing is that the membrane has uh, more space between it, but it has smaller pores so that... Um, between all the layers, I think, there's more space, so the water can kind of, mm -hmm. has more time to move. But it has able to catch all the bacteria. Okay. Now, um, this is amazing because it's pretty convenient. Um, they go through a lot of details about how it works and how long they've been working. Are they people that worked at Brita working on this? People that worked at 3M's water projects? Um, this is kind of good for Western countries that are, like, you know, I guess what you'd say is a first world country, a developed country for people who like to hike, who like to go camping, do outdoor trips. But this is even better for countries that are kind of developing that in what they're calling emerging markets, mm -hmm. 
like Brazil and India who um, have purchasing power but they don't have a good infrastructure for clean water. Uh, this makes it super easy for them to filter the water at home. They just take their bottle, fill it up, put the filter in, and it says, they're saying that it can filter the water at the normal rate of a bottle without a filter on it because of how much space is between oh, the membranes. Wow. Um, it's been tested by BioVer Laboratories, which is a water testing facility. And it says it meets the EPA standard of 99.9999% bacterial removal for safe drinking water. So I imagine that's from an unfiltered source, so not like a city water source, but from like a river or a creek. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that's what it's from, but I imagine that's what they're starting from to make it to a 9.9999 because if you did it from city water, it wouldn't be that impressive. Yeah. Um, so they won TechCrunch's little competition. Um, basically, they said they want to be the Intel inside of water industry, which, um, if you remember Intel's processors and computers, that was their big thing for a while. There's like Intel inside was the big deal for computers. Now, speaking of computers, Chris, computers have batteries in them now because most people are using a laptop. Oh, yeah. Your phone has a battery in it now. Uh, my watch has a battery. Everything has batteries now, pretty much, except for our lights. Our lights are plugged into the wall. Um, so how long does it take you to recharge your iPhone from dead? Uh, I feel like I've asked you this like 10 times since we started the podcast. Completely from completely zero to 100. Completely dead. Zero to 100. Three to four hours. Three to four hours. You? How long do you wish it would take? I don't know. Mine never, mine never dies that much. I charge it overnight. Uh, how fast? It probably takes my phone about two to three hours to go to a full charge, probably. It depends on the... If it's plugged into the wall. Uh -huh. Plugged into the wall, we're talking now. Not like plugged into your car or anything like that, but a normal wall. It, I guess it would depend. It, it, it usually takes from a dead charge to full, it's probably about two to three hours for uh, most phones now. Um, how long do you think it should take? Uh, how long would you ideally have it take to charge your phone from zero to 100? 35 to 55 minutes. 35 to 55 minutes. What if I told you there was a company that says they can do it in three minutes? I would say take my money. I would okay. Sign up real quick. Well, remember we've talked about battery technology before on yes. the show because we love batteries because yes. they make the world go round in a non-literal sort of way. Well, Nucleus Scientific at TechCrunch disrupt New York said they can charge your phone in minutes. Their aim, you know, Tesla's cars, the electric, yes. you know, Elon Musk, the SpaceX guy, mm -hmm. his other company. Well, their goal, Sci Nucleus Scientific's goal, is to be able to charge a Tesla and the amount of time it takes to pump a tank of gas. I would say I want to see this. I would buy an electric car if I could charge it that fast. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay, maybe. I, I probably wouldn't because I'm not buying a new car anytime soon. No. But if I were buying a new car. Okay, so here's what they can do. Um, I'm not going to go through all the science behind it because we're not a science show. We're mm -hmm. a talk about the new technology coming out show. So let's give you something we can relate to. A 10,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, they charge it in 15 minutes. Uh, that's not really, no one knows what that means. So let's try a, how about 14,000 milliamp hour battery, which is uh, equal to about nine smartphones. Okay. So if you had nine smartphones all together, that, those batteries would be about 14,000 milliamp hour okay. batteries. Um, they charge it in 100 seconds in a lab test. Oof. Now, the life of the battery was pretty terrible, like n not how long it could stay charged, but like how many times you could charge it. Pretty terrible at 100 second charge, but if they increase the charging time to three minutes, it doubled the life of the battery. Wow. So three minutes, they were able to charge nine smartphones, or the equivalent of nine smartphone batteries, basically. Mm -hmm. um, they're using what they're calling constant current, constant voltage. Um, it's hard on batteries, obviously, as we saw with the 100... But it charges them really fast. So I guess we got to make uh, um, slow down the time, or would you get a better battery? Uh, they would. Right now they're slowing down the time. Okay. Because um, I don't know if you know this, but I, well, you do know this because we've talked about it before on the show. Battery technology hasn't changed much since the nineties. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, they went from nickel to lithium ion, which made you able to uh, charge your battery anytime during its discharge cycle. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's about the biggest revolution in battery technology, and like since batteries exist about fifteen years, so twenty five years. Um, yeah, batteries haven't seen much improvement. Um, they've gotten smaller for like smartphones, mm -hmm. but the technology inside of them is basically the same technology as when they started making lithium ion batteries sometime in like the early 2000s, mm -hmm. which really the only difference between those and the nickel ones was that you can charge them anytime during the cycle. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of people who are sitting there yelling at us right now saying there's all these other differences, which is true. There's a lot of different small differences, but the reality is um, technology right now, like phones, for instance, pretty much limited by battery technology on what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. um, if the batteries were better, you could put a better processor in them so you could do more things. You could have better screens. Um, not that I think phones need to be any bigger, quite frankly. Yeah. But the point is, the battery is really the limiting factor in most technology right now because we're all trying to make everything portable. The Apple Watch, even, a day battery life. I mean, oh, it's a watch. Yeah. People don't charge watches. Like, they want to be able to wear it all day and not worry about it dying. Not going to happen with the Apple Watch. You're going to be worried about it dying mm -hmm. if you use it. So, any company that thinks they can make batteries better, um, I'm good with. And I'll gladly talk about them and get their name out there. So, that was Nucleus Scientific. And I think that that's awesome. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. All right. Um, now let's not talk about that. Chris, did you see the Avengers? No, you did. I, I did. Friday, IMAX. I saw it in IMAX. 3D or just regular? It was IMAX 3D. I'm cutting a story because I want to make sure we get to your quiz. Mm. But the Avengers was good. I'd rank it um, not as good as Captain America 2. Okay. Four, four out of five stars? Four out of five stars, I'd say. It's a solid four out of five. It wasn't... I've heard a lot of people say that they weren't impressed by it, that the plot was too easily guessed, um, that That's they weren't movie. impressed by the, the plot, they weren't impressed by this or that. Let's be honest. It was the Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, they, oh, they weren't impressed by Ultron. They thought he should have been more evil. They thought he should have been less evil. Um, it's kind of hard to really be specific about their gripes without spoiling anything. But, let's be honest. The um, Avengers Age of Ultron trailers weren't exactly trying to hide anything. And I don't remember exactly what was in the trailer, so I don't want to spoil anything. But even the things that, that I heard people complaining about, I don't know. I felt like the plot in most superhero movies is pretty predictable. There's going to be some bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. The good guys are going to fight them. The, if it's a team of good guys, they're going to fight amongst themselves, and then they're going to pull together and probably win. I mean, let's be honest, it's like the plot of 90% of the superhero movies. Exactly. Uh, the fact that you were able to guess that, to me, isn't very impressive, other than just as you watch a lot of superhero movies. Um, yeah, it could have been better. Like, Captain America 2 had a great plot that had a lot of good twists in it. Mm -hmm. The Avengers wasn't going for having a good twist. It was going for, hey, let's pull all these heroes together again. Let's approach this topic of Ultron and have fun. Um, I thought it was good. It explored some of the other characters. It explored Hawkeye a little bit more, which was great. Um, well, they don't want to make an individual Hawkeye movie. Right. Maybe, so, so they have to do something like this. For I don't them. know. It was a solid four out of five on the entertainment factor. The plot was probably, if you're looking at just a plot, yeah, it probably wasn't a 4 out of 5. It was funny. Um, I heard that the jokes got repetitive to some people. They felt like everyone had the same humor in the movie. But again, it's Marvel. That's pretty typical of a Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, no spoilers. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Maybe after you watch it, we can do a separate spoiler episode and talk about it. Or not. I don't really care either way. In three years. There's a lot of other movies coming out that we're going to be talking about. Yes, we are. But, Chris, we don't want to run out of time for your quiz. Okay. Because, you know... This is going to be a short episode. Uh, Shorter than usual. I, I like the time. It, I like it. I like that we're really trying to crunch it in a nice 30 to 40 minute time Definitely. frame. So, Chris, you like music. I do. So, this is going to be a nice music quiz for you. There's okay. not going to be a multiple choice. Makes it harder. It makes it harder. Now I I looked through these and all of them, um, you should have heard about. 
you may not make the connection, but you, you've heard of this yeah. of all of these things. So, question one. What legendary U.S. festival hosted over 350,000 fans took place in 1969? Woodstock. Woodstock. All right. In what year was the famous rapper Notorious B.I.G. shot and killed in a drive-by shooting? 1993. Ah, oh, it was 1997. 97. In what year did the song Rhapsody in Blue by George Gershon get played for the first time? I don't know that okay. song. Can I guess, or can you give me uh, 70s, 80s, 90s? Or way earlier than that. Really? Um, Try sometime in the 20s. 20s? Wow, I'm way off. Uh, 1927. Oh, 24. 24. I'm sure you've heard this song, though. If I heard it, maybe. If you'd heard this song, you would have known it was from the 20s also. <laughs> All right. I think you know this. I in what year did popular musicians Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix both die from drug overdoses? Oh man, uh, people are going to hate me for this. Uh, 70s? Um, 70s? 70, exactly, Seven. yes. All right. Oh, this one is, this is a game you all have to say, is Freddie Mercury. Uh -huh. In 1991, Freddie Mercury announced he had the AIDS virus and dies the next day. He was the front man of what band? Queen. Oh yeah, Queen. Name three bands that were part of the British Invasion in the 60s. The Beatles, mm -hmm. uh, the, Rolling mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones, mm -hmm. and The Who. Oh, yeah. All right. You won't know this, but I'll ask you. What was Elvis Presley's first hit in 1956? Um, how Great Thou Art. Nope. Heartbreak Hotel. Heartbreak Hotel. That was pretty obscure. Um... Oops. Because he was, he was a. Did you know he he used to sing uh, hymns? Mm -hmm. I I figured out. Um, that. how familiar with the 1959 pop culture? Uh, there was a plane crash that killed three popular musicians of the time. Um, if 59? I told you one of them was Big Bopper, would you know? No. Okay. Well, it was Buddy Holly and Richie Valens. Like I said, some I do know. I do know those two. Like I said, I know you know them, but. Oh, this is a good one. In what year did MTV premiere? What was the first music video the channel aired? 91. 1991? What was the video? Um, you really don't know this? No. Okay, I well, don't. it was 81, and it was Video Killed the Radio Star. Uh, you didn't that? know that? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I didn't really care for MTV. Fair. This stuff is terrible nowadays. It's not really music anymore. <laughs> All right. In the late 1990s, a new wave of, quote, bubblegum pop, end quote, artist bands became popular. Who were some of these artist bands? In sync. All right, so you know exactly what I'm talking about, the bubblegum pop. I don't, I just guessed. That's all right, and sync, those style of bands, keep going. Um, uh, Backstreet Boys. Yep. Uh, it's probably all I got. I mean, Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Come on, there's a popular one that I like to say her name all the time because I've been school of rock, they say it funny. Oh man, I don't know that. Oh come on, you've seen School of Rock. I have. It's he, been so long. We you know, he doing. asked. He asked the bands. He's like, "Come on, who are your favorite artists?" And one of the girl answers, and she goes, "Her, uh, Christina, Christina Aguilera." Aguilera. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't say Madonna. No, Madonna would have been way before that. Okay, yes. that was pretty fun. There's ten more. You want to keep going? Yes, this is fun. Okay. I'm doing pretty well, actually. I'm surprised I'm doing this well. What style of music that emerged in the 1970s featured themes of heavier and louder music and anti-establishment lyrics? Uh, punk. Punk rock. Punk rock. Oh, yeah. Come on, you got the Ramones, you got the Pistols. Come on now. Okay, that's back to Elvis again. We'll skip him. Okay. Okay, you'll, you'll, you know who this is. Let's see if you can make this <laughs> together. What famous singer of the 40s 50s and 60s got his start performing with the Dorsey Band in 1940. Oh man. Um, there was one guy that was really popular through the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Come on. Give me, can I take a couple kisses? Go for Frankie it. Frankie Valley. Frank was close, but not Valley. Uh, Frank. Dude, if I tell you the answer to this, you're going to hate yourself Ooh, forever. So mad. Come on, Frank. Uh, man, I don't know. Frank. I don't know. Sinatra? I, oh, Frank Sinatra. Okay. Because I, I swore he was back in the 30s and 40s and 50s. I must be He's wrong. Old. Okay. Frank Sinatra. Back to the British Invasion. In okay. what year did the Beatles announce they were disbanding? It's probably earlier than you think. 
79. Like I said, 70. Oh, yeah. 1970. 1970, wow. they announced it. Okay, here's one you should know. This is more current. What genre of music became much more popular and mainstream in the 2000s that featured superstar artists like Jay-Z, Kanye West, Outkast, Eminem, and many others? Uh, this is more like a hip-hop? Hip-hop is an acceptable answer. Okay. Which popular musician bought ATV music and every Beatles song for $47 million in 1985? Oh. Come on. Apple. He was, Apple's not an artist. Come on. Oh, artist. Think about it. Which musician. Oh, musician. Which musician me. bought ATV music and every Beatles song? Uh, Come on. He was real popular in the 80s. Uh, man, I don't know 80s, but let's see. He was smooth and a criminal. Michael Jackson. Michael Are you Jackson. serious? Wow, I did you not know that. You didn't know he that. bought every Beatles no, song? No, I did yeah. not. Okay, this is kind of stupid. What year was the U.S. Grammy Awards started? Oh, man. No one cares, but 80. it was 1959. I mean, you were saying the 80s. Oh, 85. Okay, here we go. You'll know this one. What was the new style of rock music that arose in the early to mid-90s through bands such as Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, and others? Emo. Emo? <laughs> Nirvana wasn't emo? Pearl Jam? Try again. Um, it's known from, from Seattle. Yeah, that's, like, that's like rock. It's like... Yeah, it's a form of rock. Uh, Chris. Post-rock. Grunge. Grunge, okay. Come on. You're hurting me. I know. I know about my punk and punk rock and hardcore. Okay, who won the first American Idol contest in 2002? Uh, Carrie Underwood. No, I don't that was not the first one. That was one of them. Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. I didn't see, I didn't listen, watch that stuff. Oh, but come on, but everyone knows it was Kelly well, Clarkson. Well, I had a little 13-inch TV. All right, one bonus question for you. Okay. The British Invasion again. The Beatles released their first UK single, Love Me Do, in what year? 50s? Nope. 60s. 60s. 63. Two. Two. Very close. They were only officially releasing songs for eight years before they announced disbanding. I did not know that. Isn't that crazy? You would have thought they would have been popular for about 20 years. They released years. a lot of songs. Worst of all time. Sergeant Peppers. Sergeant Worst Peppers. Album. I actually didn't listen to the Beatles that much. Uh, I used to. I just, I don't know, could never get into them. But Chris, it's time to say goodbye to our fans. Just wrote a tone. But first, Chris, where can we find you? Uh, I am on Twitter at Never Lose Heart. I'm on Instagram at fight underscore with underscore heart. Um, I'm on Vine every now and then. Eh, every now and then he has something funny, huh? like him driving tractors around the parking lot. Yeah, it's pretty Good fun. stuff. James? Yes. What about you? You can find me on Twitter, at James Walter. You can find me on Facebook, slash James Walter. If you add me on Facebook, though, send me a message saying that you watched the podcast, because otherwise I'll just ignore you thinking you're spam. But go ahead and do that, though, if you want to be friends, and it's cool. Uh, you can find The Weekly Flair on Twitter. Instagram, and Facebook, all at the Weekly Flare. Uh, we also live stream on Meerkat and uh, Periscope every other week alternating. So next week it'll be Periscope. Um, we also have a Patreon page if you want to give us a few bucks and if we get enough money coming in each month, we'll buy some better recording gear, maybe do an extra show every couple weeks just for our Patreon viewers. Do some cool stuff. Let us know what you'd like to see as for rewards. Um, we also have a YouTube. It's uh, the Weekly Flare podcast because the Weekly Flare wasn't allowed. Don't know. Uh, Anything else you want to plug, Chris? Nothing. I'm just saying email us if you have any good quiz questions because I like this quiz idea. If you like the quizzes, let us know. Definitely. Send us some questions. Maybe you'd like to see us do some different things. But um, Maybe, Chris, maybe this. How about if we get enough Patreon, we'll do a separate quiz episode that we just do quiz. That actually be a very good. Let idea. us know if you'd like that. Have you thought also uh, inviting maybe one of our listeners on again? Maybe if we have a national listener, uh, we could Skype them, Skype in. them in, or absolutely, um, maybe play a quiz with a, with a with one of our viewers, or maybe we get are, someone in here. We again. want you guys to like the show you're watching. So let us know if you have any suggestions on what you would like to see like that. And we'll throw them in a hat and draw one out. Definitely. I think we'll have, no, we'll have a better will we system have another, than that. Will we have another guest or a Oh, we'll definitely have guests on. Definitely. we got to get the guests on. But, 
Yeah. So let us know what you'd like to see on the show. Like I said, send us an email, podcast at theweeklyflare.com. You can tweet at us. You can Facebook us. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see, what you like, what you don't like. And we will see you guys again in seven days. Thank you, everybody. That was fun. Peace.